Good day, everyone, and welcome to episode number 24 in the Great Soviet Experiment, otherwise known as season one. We're opening up our view today over the town of Krivoy Ri, uh, just slightly to the west of Dneptepetrovsk. I think that's a sk there, isn't it? Yes, Dneptepetrovsk. Um, my apologies for ruining the Russian language to anyone who's watching who speaks the language, but um, it's really hard to get my tongue around that stuff. So where we are currently is we are about to launch, or we're in the preparation phase, as I should say, of launching our assault against the Germans uh, down here in this area. And we've set up two armies to attack. And those armies are General Berezin's army and uh, General Lasov's army. Both down there, both have been given their objectives. Now we're not, we're not pushing a huge distance, but we are pushing and we are going to try to make some headway against the Germans who are holding the area. Now, uh, the other thing I might do, actually, just having thought about that for one second, is we don't have a lot of things in here. So I think what we should do is add support artillery and a field hospital and logistics. Now, the reason why I'm adding the field hospital, um, and we should maybe just go back on this for a second, because it's not not obvious, is, 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 the experience loss. So it's the third item down, um, experience loss minus 30%. So when you get replacements, you lose the experience that the army or the divisions built up. And we want to minimize that effect, especially in armor, especially in armor. So we're going to do that. Did I save that? I'm a shocker. I can't remember from one minute to the next what I'm doing. Yep, we did save it. Cool. Uh, now let's just go and have a look because he's in training. Yeah, look, we need to get him up well beyond green before we've commenced this assault. And also, we had prepared, um, or are preparing, the Army Stalingrad to participate as well. And they are also in training. But I think what we might do is put them, put them, put them, put them in here, um, in Stalino and then do training in Stalino because they're, they're not ready to take to the front yet either. Now, in terms of what we've got in our other two armies, not some of them are... That one's extremely good, actually. Um, but these guys, not so good. I'm actually tempted to put them into training, but I can't because they're on the front line. And that's going to be rather um, difficult. But what we could do is have a look at what we've got in our train divisions. Oh, we've got, we got another division of uh, mech. We have several divisions of mech, in fact. So let's bring our other units up to speed. We'll assign you there. We will assign you there. That is good. And, well, uh, what else? Go back and have a look, see what we've got. Now, what we could do is create some more. And more is always good. So here we go, let's do this. We'll get three of you going along. And three of you going along. Keep, uh, where is it? Where, 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 where? We've lost the anti-air. There it is, anti-air, very good. 
Um, now also, some of these are now at a level where we can interchange them. But we don't have three yet, so we will... Oh no, we do, okay. So what we could do is especially for Comrade Bezarin. We could take from you three units that are not up to fully trained yet, which would be, well, they're very close actually. What about Comrade Lasov? Yeah, they're a little bit further away. So if we take three from Comrade Vlasov and put them into training, and we take three complete ones and add them to Comrade Vlasov, they should immediately go and rush over to the front. Yeah, but maybe not. No, maybe not. Doesn't seem to want to rush anywhere. All right, let's uh, let's manually bring them across and put them like I don't know. How about there? How's that grab? Every, uh, there. That seems like the plan. Actually, let's not go around that way. Let's go this way. Better idea. Much better idea. And then I think we should replace three of these guys. Put them in the training brigade. Yes. And take three from the training brigade that are up to speed. Namely... I don't know Russian for one, two, three. Oddly enough, I know the German, but um, that's not going to be very helpful in this particular scenario. But those three, now what does that mean? If unit were to continue moving, it would cause the next province to require more supplies than it is capacity for. Explicit move order can, be, can force the unit to move it out anyway. Well, yeah, we... Okay, we've got a front line going on. We cannot afford um, to have delays. So let's let's move you here, actually, and, and see how that goes. Okay, so we've we've done some reorganisation. Let's check quickly before we get too far into the game where we're at. Well, we're at a steal again. Hmm. Japan. I don't think Japan's going to... Well, they might. What do you think? They might? Well, we've already got two from them. Biomass. Well, actually, you know what? Why not? Cool. Well, that's, that's unreal, isn't it? I guess the Japanese are no longer going to be our enemies, per se. All right, so we are we are building up ready for the assault down here. Um, I'm not sure I know how well we're going to go, but we're getting ready. Let's check to see where we're up to. Oh, we're down to 26. Holy dooly, we ran out of artillery. That was very bad. All right, we ran out of artillery. Anyone see that coming? No, I didn't. Uh, all right, let's go up to 15. Wow, okay. Uh, and let's put the artillery before the anti-air because that's that's a desperate need for us now. Okay. Ooh, not good. Anti-air we took a hit on too. At least light tanks are coming up, and medium tanks as well. Fighters, we're down fighters. Naval bombers, we've got a stack of naval bombers. No tactical bombers, though. Oh, gosh. So much trouble with factories and everything. Speaking of factories. One, two, three, four. Yeah, 
we're going to need to bring some more up, I think. Uh, let's go and make some more. Just because we can. Um, Kharkov is uh, Kharkov is a big area where we could get some really good push for developing factories because we left it basically underutilized because um, it was one of those areas close to the front. So I think we're okay to start our push now. We've got enough developed and enough deployed. Now all we need to do is train it up to regular before we begin the attack. And I think we can actually make this work. So let's go up to three because that's what we're going to be needing to do now is just get into the position where this can work. One, two, three, four. Yep, okay. Just to make sure, okay. Hundred and forty-four. Okay, we might we might do okay. We might do okay. Oh, the United States cancelled the lend lease. Now, why did they do that? I wonder. Oh, okay. Maybe not so good. Um, what are things like in terms of our infrastructure? Um, I think we should probably develop some more, especially close to the front. Um, but let's take care of the holes first. Oh, hang on. Oh, really? They're striking again. How annoying. We're going to have to make... Oh, look at that. Political power gets hammered again. All right. Well, fine. Hmm... I kind of understand why people get really uptight when you're fighting on the front line and then others go on strike because, you know, they're not making enough money. Yeah, it'd be quite irritating, really. So now the question is, where do we attack first or do we just let the generals work that out? I'm tending to go for letting the generals work that out, frankly. Um, and then we can, we've got uh, an armoured army and another infantry assault army that we can bring to bear when they look like they're starting to make breakthrough. We are getting on top of artillery, but it's quite a slow process. How's infantry equipment, by the way? Back up to 40k. So I think what I would like to do now is move another five. You know what? Let's move another one into artillery. Actually, I'm going to sacrifice five, but not that five. I'm going to sac. Oh, it's Done it now. I'll sacrifice five from here for artillery. Yep. And improved anti air. Okay. And then I'm going to add five to the PPS 43. Cool. And we have a new ace pilot. Very good. War support plus two. Uh, and we are starting to manufacture now more of the PPS-43. Uh, we still need 57,000 for reinforcements, but we're getting there. So it's shaping up. Oh, no. We're getting a deficit again in artillery. Oh, dear. Well, we have produced, I think, as much as we're going to now. 
what we could work on now, um, just to make sure our units are building and we're not sitting still, just let's go up here for a second. Oh, I was already there. My bad. Um, and have a look. See, this is the 21 AA. Then we have a 16 and we have a 20 infantry division. The 20 infantry division is quite possibly where we want to be above and beyond the 16 1 which we have. So notice in the 16 1 we have MPs and engineers, but only a combat with the 16. And in the infantry division 21, we have engineers, artillery, the field hospital, and a weird combat width of 19.2. So, uh, except for the fact that it's going to cost us artillery, well, this, mm, I think we may have to hold off on that. It was a good idea, but I think we're going to have to hold off. Uh, simply because okay and we need you uh, simply because we we don't have the artillery to cover it so we're running at 73.9 and we have a, an efficiency of 100 so we've got a little way to go and we are out of Steel, again. Wow, big time. German Reich, United Kingdom. Well, I think we're going to have to get more from the United States, frankly. Let's go one more. 55. Really? Hmm, okay. Let's try again. 96. Hooli dooly. Why are we going through so much? Готов подвигаться. Wow. There's a thing. Okay, I think we're going to need to stop producing this after this particular run and just stay with tanks because I think we've we've gone past our use by date frankly for useful troops. Yes, indeed. Okay. So, where are we? One, two, three, one. Oh, they're striking. Of course, that's why. Heroes, one and all. Gain base stability, five. Okay. We're losing political power like it's nobody's business. And I'm going to now develop... No, I think we're doing okay there. Now I think we need to work on the anti-air a bit more. Um, or possibly... No, we should do it here. We get a, a global stats upgrade, which is good, and I think we should take it. So we have got these, this guy is in training, and he's almost ready. What about the armoured unit for the assault? Well, at least everyone's on trained, but they're not up to regular status. So I think we might have to wait on them a little bit. We are certainly holding against their results. Let's see what happens now. Oh, look at you. We could start the assault early. Interesting proposition. Well, you know what? The enemy gave us an opportunity. I am not inclined to go against them. Especially like when it's free. <coughs> OK, 
Okay, all right, let's just pause this for a second because we just, we just took an opportunity and made it work for us. And I am not unhappy about that at all. Um, okay, I think maybe we should go down this. Actually, you know what? Let's go down. Where, where are we? We're not at the bottom one yet. I'd like to use the bottom one for that if I could. So let's rethink this uh, and go over to tanks for a minute. So what have we got here? 349. We could update the light tank, but you know what I would like to do? I would like to get... That's an anti-tank gun. The SU-152 is the self-propelled artillery. A medium artillery cannon mounted on a medium tank chassis. A medium SPG packs respectable firepower while still being quite mobile. I'm going to go ahead and research that variant, actually. Because I think that could be very useful to us. Now, we've actually made a breakthrough. And I think we should probably exploit it. But I'm going to exploit it on a one, just in case this starts to go horribly bad. But it doesn't look like it's going to go horribly bad. No, indeed. This looks like it could go moderately well. Especially if I do that. So, I think we should bring Army Stalingrad out of its uh, training exercise and let it recover some of its, um, what's it called again, organization. And let's go up and see if we can't get a handle on Dnetrovetrovsk. Because that would be a fairly good thing to push on. And it looks like that opportunity that was presented to us is turning into a real opportunity. So let's get you out of training as well. Because if we're going to use you, I think we need to be going to Dnepropetrovsk. Like so. And we'll see how that goes. Hmm, interesting. Oh, look, we did it. Holy dooly. We've got a breakthrough going on, ladies and gentlemen. Nice. Where are you going? Right, okay. Well, I'll tell you what, let's go there and straight into there, even across the river. And we'll send the tanks around so that they are not going across the river. Just get the speed up a bit. And then as soon as this guy's finished, I think we'll start the assault from Comrade Berezin. Because that's going to put those five units in a weakened position. Oh, he got across the river. Well, not for long, buddy. Not for long. I'm going to activate, actually, all the plans because I think we we just need to take advantage of this while we can. Just hold you up for a minute too. Ooh. 
yes, look at that, ladies and gentlemen. What an opportunity. What an opportunity. And look at the supply lines. We're in so much trouble. <laughs> But that was a great opportunity, and you never know what will happen when you take the opportunities that are presented to you. They could, as they did in this case, present us with a viable um, pushback against the enemy and a success. Now, of course, the other thing is, too, when he starts losing down here, which he is, he's going to start pulling troops off the rest of the line, um, which he may be doing but not this far north, probably further down here looks like the go. So let's just get these guys up for a bit of fun and just pop them in there and see what that will do. The generals are executing the plan. So far it's looking extremely good. I think we're going to get the Nepe Petros back. Bargain. Now in terms of our armoured units, let's not take them to the Nepe Petros. Let's take them there and then push them straight into Krivoyri. Oh, did we just push him out of there? We did. Formation fighting. Very nice. Six days left there. Okay. I think we need to continue with the air. We certainly have the points that we can spend. In six more days, we're going to start um, nuclear research down the bottom here. Actually, nuclear or rocket? I think I'm going to go rocket, actually. I don't think we need an A-bomb right now. Let's activate Field Marshal Golikov and see what, what he adds to the mix. How's he looking, by the way? Attack plus 15, defense plus 10, supply consumption minus 5, infantry division attack plus 10, defense plus 10, reinforce rate plus 2, planning speed, max planning bonus and promotion cost. That's not shabby at all. Doesn't look like we were able to get in there. But the pressure is certainly on in here. Now as soon as he's completed defending, I think we should probably add to the attack in there. I think we're going to do some damage. I think it's looking pretty healthy, although... Um, ah, finish research. I-S. Ah, okay. That's the variant. Oh no, that's the heavy. Alright, the heavy. We've got the heavy. Just pause this for a second. So let's go and, and see what we've got going on in here. So the heavy tank is now going to be the heavy three, the heavy three, which is the IS, right? We want three of those, one more medium, and we have a variant now as well, which is the T44 medium tank. No, is the variant not done? No, the variant is not done, but now, this is where we get to ask the question. Rocketry or bomb? 
I am inclined for rocketry because it gives a lot of bonuses to um, basic rockets that we have, i.e. these guys in here. Now if we come down here and we have a look at this, or maybe this, and then this, and do a comparison. Defense, less for rockets. Soft attack, four more for rockets. Piercing, less for rockets. Production cost, higher for rockets. Breakthrough, 50% better for breakthrough. I think what we probably need is a mix of the two. So we will start developing rockets soon and uh, see what we can bring in for them. And I'm getting also concerned about the fact that our 40s don't have... Uh, now let's have a look at these guys for example. Supply is a huge issue. I don't think the... For I think that's the, the problem with the 40s right there. Is we just don't have the supply. I'm thinking we might have to go down to 20s actually. Uh, otherwise we're going to end up in pretty serious trouble. But that now what happened to this guy's Royce. attack? It, no, Bezerin's attack. Novel and interesting, but it's gone. Now that's interesting, isn't it? Okay. But this one seems to be going okay. We haven't quite got the scope that I wanted. So I think maybe we could redefine his objective line. And just make it like that. And execute. Is that... Oh, that's because Golikov's been activated. Right. Okay. Yeah, okay. Maybe that's what that was. Okay. We stopped that. Let's... Let's redefine your front. Which we gave you before. We'll go from there across there. Yep. Okay. And they're both executing, so that's fine. Well, that certainly was a very nice turn of events in this episode. And I think we should probably bring some more pressure to bear on you. Okay, that's the uh, mobile. Yeah, oh, sorry. That's the mobile, and I think now what we need to do is go and find you. Medium, self-propelled artillery. Now, your artillery, so we actually want you up with the artillery because you are going to be more important than these two combined. We're going to start replacing for our assault units standard artillery. Convert from... No, I don't want to convert from stock. Um, actually, but I am going to put you down under the heavy tank. Actually, I'm going to put you down under the... Yeah, under the heavy tank. What? No, stop it. What am I doing? Yeah, you before you. You have range. You up there. That's it. Okay. Um... Yeah, that's right. And then she could, Oh, the strike is over. Hooray! We we are at war, guys, you know? We are at war. Okay. Alright. Uh, and we've got R&D going on. So... Oh, back to air. What's air doctrine doing? Air doctrine is fine. Now, let's catch up here. With 
construction speed because that's always a good thing to have on our side. Now I'm, I'm just, just wanting, if I can, to finish this off, to get to the areas where we uh, want to be in terms of holding. Just go straight in there, please. And this guy, yeah, I think we can just go there. And we'll just try and finish this off and then stop at our new line uh, and call it a successful pushback against the German occupiers. Well, they, they have occupied a reasonable amount of land. That's for sure. But it does show that the Soviet army has turned the corner. And we are now the force to be reckoned with. You know, as soon as this new front solidifies itself, yep, and we take this area here, no, over here please, thank you, we don't want the Yermans in there. Wait for the armoured units to attack and then we'll support them with infantry. Actually, while we're waiting, the infantry can go in there. And we will support them with these guys. 62, we will support them with these guys. We will support them with these guys. And uh, hopefully we're going to push them out of there in this very episode. Now. What does that mean for us? Well, I think it means we have turned a corner. Um, but we're bleeding artillery. Holy dooly. I think we are going to need to go down to the 20. So let's have a... Just before we finish off the episode, while the, while the valiant Soviet troops are... Um, trying to get the Germans out of that area there. Let us just redesign the assault unit so that it turns into a 20 and not a 40. So I think that's going to be the way forward for us. Oh, not you. So the Infantry Division 40, we're going to duplicate you going to make you so the 40 what have we got? how about you you look like a good symbol for an infantry unit um, first of all we probably want to remove a couple of these uh, actually we're going to go half right so we could go three there we can shave off Three, where are we down to now? 28. So let's just call this Infantry Division 20A1. Okay. That's 23. Twenty-one. 20.2. I'm going to leave it at 20.2. Oh, am I? 18.6. What, what do you lose? What do you lose? 15. What if we did this? That's 20.6. 
I'm going to go 2, 4, 6, 7. I'm going to go 20.2. And that's the new one we're going to start using. We just, we just don't have the facilities to do that. So what we could do, just before we leave, is let's go oh, here sure. and let's turn six of those into the lighter ones. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, got off. Into the lighter infantry division. So we need one motorized and we need one anti-air. We gain back 54,000 manpower, 44,700 and 358 towed artillery. Which looks like that, which is very good. Okay, so I think that's where we're at for now. And uh, we need the new anti-air for sure. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. I uh, am very pleased to report that apart from some sporadic fighting north-west uh, of Donetsk de Petrovsk, we have uh, retaken the city of Krivoy, the city of Donetsk Petrovsk, and areas to the west of... Uh, what, are, what river is that, by the way? Does anyone know what river that is? Hmm, I'll have to find out what river that is. But anyway, we're west of the river. So that is the first pushback into the Reich since the war began. So the Soviet army is moving from the, a defensive posture to an offensive posture, and that bodes quite well for the future. So thank you all very much for joining me today. I do hope you have enjoyed this episode and the pushback against the Reich. I look forward to seeing you in the Gig Channel again soon. And until then, stay well, everyone. And I'll see you all later. Bye-bye.